Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride, ever feel your desire. One day I noticed that my life was broken. It was not me who was controlling. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League's Chaos Cup Championship match. Tonight we have two absolutely fantastic coaches, and I am joined once again by my man, Artificial Bunny. How's it going, man? Doing great. Ready for Except some blood. Ready yeah, for some bowl. <laughs> Both blood and Ready for some tonight. chaos. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight we're going to have a great one. We have two absolutely fantastic coaches uh, tonight. We're going to have That's Kind of Catchy versus the Dinner Bell Darling, Sweet Bunny versus Doug the Minotaur. What a matchup this is. Elves versus Dwarves. Oh, I, I, I love these, like, these, these yin versus yang matchups. These are my favorite matchups in Blood Bowl and uh, with two excellent coaches at the helm. I'm excited to see what they do with their rosters tonight. Uh, why don't we take a look at the bracket before we start talking about these two teams? As you can see in the semifinals, that's kind of catchy. Defeated the Division A uh, champions, Masters of Mammal. They were undefeated until they hit the semifinals. They lost out to that's kind of catchy. And then the Dinner Bell Darlings undefeated. They faced your team, Artificial Bunny, the Poker Ratman. They defeated you guys to advance here to the finals. They are still undefeated. I was stomped. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings. 8-0-0 uh, right now. They've only given up a single touchdown this competition and therefore all season long. What what a showing for the Dinner Bell Darlings and indeed for both these coaches here so far in the season. Can anyone stop this juggernaut? <laughs> we'll find out. First, let's, let's take a look at this roster here for that's kind of catchy. Uh, they're coming in a TV of 1080. And, <laughs> and as you can see, Rasters looking a little light. <laughs> That's kind of skinny. <laughs> looking a little light here. They're going to be down three players. That means they need to pick up three journeymen. Those uh, journeymen are your standard linemen plus the loner skills. So for them, that's going to be 210K. That's going to count against them tonight in the inducement phase. They do have this level three, which are you not entertained? And I find this player absolutely disgusting. Look at this. Frenzy, dodge, block, and sidestep. Of course, they have jump up as well. They have a stat line of 7347. Boy, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like that thinking from the perspective of an opposing coach. If this were my team, I'd love that. <laughs> He's got three blitzers. He can field four. They all come with the block skill, of course. One of them's picked up Mighty Blow. The other has picked up Tackle. Two of the linemen have picked up Russell. Not a bad skill at all. We saw him use that to great effect in the semifinals. He has his final two linemen who are level one, three TRRs, one Apothecary, six Fan Factor. Tonight, he's going to be up against the Dinner Bell Darlings. They're coming in at a TV of 1430. Uh, when you account for the journeyman, that means 140,000 gold and petty cash will be going to That's Kind of Catchy tonight. That's a pretty good chunk of change. We'll talk about what he might do with that in a second. Look at this roster. Look, uh, mm, mm. look at that menace. <laughs> Kevin Bacon must be stopped. <laughs> I can't believe this. 12 player roster and indeed Kevin Bacon, the level four runner. He has block. He has strength four. He picked up tackle. How dare him? How dare him? <laughs> oh, that's going to be put to use tonight, I'm sure. 
Yeah, if, if you thought that was the worst of it, you're mistaken. There's two other key points on this roster. The Troll Slayer, Gravy Crockett leveled up, picked up Mighty Blow. That is a player with block, with frenzy, and with Mighty Blow. Ha! <laughs> oh, don't like it. And then, of course, what's that? Seven players with guard on this roster? That's what dwarves do. But man, every time you see it, you're like, oh, oh, no. Oh, That's no. That's just a menace. <laughs> <laughs> 12 players tonight. He has a, a three team rerolls, one oppo, and eight fan factor. How do the two teams table play tonight? They play the way their teams play, right? I, I think the Dinner Bell Darlings are going to cage up on offense. They're going to plod down the pitch. They're going to open up holes. They do have Gravy Crockett. He can open up holes. Kevin Bacon, the strength four runner, probably not doing too many blocks with Kevin Bacon, but that strength four means he's just that much harder to take down. Uh, he'll be slowly moving that cage down the pitch try to score once he has the ball very very hard to get out of his hands not only that it's very hard to remove players from the pitch with all that block with all that guard with thick skulls and an av of nine dwarves are very very difficult to remove uh, on defense he's he's at a disadvantage right he's a slow team he'll have to screen out this dark this dark elf offense um how he does that is up to him he's got a, a number of options to do it but but if, if an elf gets behind him and he doesn't have a secondary there to cover, the elven team's just gonna score. I think on defense, you'll see Kevin Bacon play in safety, probably with another player, maybe even Guac Holiday, and uh, they'll just be playing coverage just in case somebody breaks free. Uh, on offense for that's kind of catchy, they're elves. What do you say about elves on offense? I, I, think they're, I think what elves do on offense is score, am I wrong? You are totally right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do. That, uh, that's has, what they're made for. That's what they're made for. He has lots of options. Uh, he being Sweet Bunny has lots of options on offense. He can run, he can pass. Everybody has an AG of four. Um, really, there's not a whole lot stopping him from scoring. The thing that's going to determine when he scores is going to be the pacing of the match. If he is on offense in the first half, he doesn't want to score too early and, and lose out to a, a two on grind. He will probably see him do what he has done a couple of times already. He'll pull back. Uh, he'll, he'll keep his his thrower or his ball carrier way, 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 way in his backfield and try to stall that way rather than giving up hits turn after turn after turn to this uh, menacing Dwarven team. If he is on defense in the first half, I think that's where he wants to be. I think if he wins the coin toss, that's exactly what he's going to do. Um, and there he's just going to back up. Um, He's not going to give too many blocks to this Dwarven team, I think. I'm not in the finals, so who knows what's going to happen. But uh, I would imagine he just wants to hold the Dwarven team to their blitz. If he finds a way to apply pressure to that cage and force that Dwarven team to start burning through rerolls or taking chances, I think he'll do it. Remember, he does have the Witch Elf. The Witch Elf has Frenzy. Uh, she also has Sidestep, so if she gets blocked down, she can get herself to safety. Um, and in the rare case that maybe she has the ball, she can even get an extra space of movement. Um, boy, <laughs> boy, I, I, this could go either way. Do you have a favorite here? Well, obviously I have to favor Bunny just because of the name. But <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta have a Bunny solidarity here tonight, huh? Bunny solidarity indeed. <laughs> Uh, I really think this can go either way. And I really think uh, I've said it a lot here in this finals bracket, and I think it still holds true tonight. Uh, I think this is really going to come down to momentum and to pacing. We saw the match between the Masters of Mammal, and that's kind of catchy. Come down to that momentum, come down to that, to that pacing. Uh, we saw Sweet Bunny dominate the momentum all game long. And in that first half, we saw El Numerino and the Masters of Mammal counter that very, very effectively. He said, I'm not falling into your trap. I'm going to keep my defense intact. You come to me, bro. You come to me. Uh, and I, I think that's what's going to happen here tonight. Whoever controls the pacing, they're going to have the advantage. If this Dwarven team can get their marks, they're going to murder these elves, right? Uh, they're not wood elves. They do have an AV of eight instead of an AV of seven, but they're still they're still elves. Um, and, and when you're up against so much block and so much guard, you're going to get beaten up. So if, if the Elven, I'm sorry, the Dwarven team can do that, I think it come out on top. If the Elven team can use their Elf shenanigans to their advantage, 
uh, which requires them having the momentum, requires them being able to move where they want to move, I think they come out on top. Remember, this is the championship match, so there is no overtime tonight. If uh, if the game ends in a draw after 16 turns, we're going to have sudden... Uh, did I just say there's no overtime? Of course there's overtime. There is overtime tonight. There's no draws. Uh, if the game ends after 16 turns, then uh, we'll be going to uh, sudden death overtime. And if it's tied after another eight turns, we're going to kicks. Well, if anyone can stop these dwarves, it's Sweet Bunny's team. So best of luck to both coaches. If anyone's going to stop these Dark Elves <laughs> or these Dwarves, it's going to be the Dark Elf team because that's all that's left. <laughs> We're down to the final two here in the Chaos Cup. The winner tonight will advance to the Blood Bowl at the end of the season. The Blood Bowl's the, the big show. That's the Invitational. Uh, they'll advance in the upper bracket. The runner-up tonight will advance in the lower bracket. All right, we're waiting for our two coaches to get underway. What do you think? Uh, what do you think Swift Ben is going to pick up with his 140k in the inducement phase? Uh, my guess would be probably a wizard and uh, maybe Bloodweiser kegs. Uh, not a bad idea. Yeah, you think he's going to pick up more than one? don't know if he had that much gold, but if he does, that's what I would probably do. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, it looks like the Dinnerbell Darlings are going to set up on defense to start. There's our wizard. And oh, he picked up another apothecary. So that's kind of catchy, kind of. You kind of called it there. He picked up the wizard. He picked up an oppo. Uh, an oppo is not a babe or a keg. Uh, it's not going to help on the KOs, but it'll help keep a player safe. So a uh, pretty good call, I'd say. <laughs> SP Beaver says it just feels right if dwarves win the Chaos Cup. Why is that? Could it be that perhaps you won the Chaos Cup with a dwarven team? Dinnerbell Darling setting up their defense here. He's not screening out the pitch. He's giving up two wide zones currently. Unless I am mistaken, unless he's on offense. All right, what do you think about this defensive formation here? Very interesting choice. Yeah. It looks like he's going to try and force him to go to one side and try and trap him down. Perhaps so. He has this like this arrow formation. This is going to help uh, help avoid the blitzes for sure, uh, except on the the two ends. Um, and then of course he has the troll slayer and the runner at uh, center pitcher. Is the runner in the uh, safety position more or less as predicted? And then he has Gravy Croc at the troll slayer, right there in the middle linebacker position. He wants to keep him free and mobile to be able to get that blitz wherever he wants. That's kind of catchy going with a, an unorthodox uh, offense, it looks like here, too. I don't even know what you call this. Three players on the line, two far on the right, one far on the left. All right, he's giving himself a pocket here. Giving himself a pocket with these players. He wants to protect the ball carrier for as long as he can. He'll probably move back this way for a couple of turns just so he can avoid the hits. Fifteen seconds left to set up this formation. Now he's got this, uh, I'm going to call it a cheese grater. <laughs> he's got these <laughs> players offset here in the first three rows of uh, on his side of the of the field. Three seconds to go. And that's it. Bazinga set to receive. Neither team with a kicker. Brilliant coaching. The Darlings are going to get an extra reroll that brings them up to four. 
to start this championship game. Turn one for that's kind of catchy. There's somebody's dialings, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nuffle favored someone. As we all know, Nuffle, uh, Nuffle can't be fickle, though. <laughs> Gets the mark on Butch Casserole. Might be looking to blitz. Butch old. Blitz old Butch here over on the right side of the pitch. SP Beaver says all traditional offensive offenses have failed against these doors. Might as well try something unconventional. You know what? That's fair enough. Sweet bunny. Repositioning his players here. Trying to exert pitch control. Trying to decide where he can be on the pitch to control the pitch. That'll be where his pocket will end up being. And he'll try to leverage that for as long as he can. Here's the Witch Elf back to his own 10-yard line. Keltane, the number nine journeyman, moves over to the right. There's two spaces behind the line of scrimmage. A dead center on the field. Under a minute to play here, but that's kind of catchy. You know, Wrestle's probably one of the better skills to use against these dwarves, because as long as you just get them down on the ground it takes them so much movement to stand back up that's a very good point if you knock out a player it costs three ma to stand back up uh unless you have a skill that uh, negates that such as the witch elf here who has jump up um and with these dwarves most of them only have an ma of four so if you knock down a dwarf he's standing up moving a space unless he dares gfi Good dodge on the line. Everybody's free on the line here. You can see he took that blitz on Butch Casserole, got the push, and he's going to leave the Dinner Bell Darlings with only a blitz to take on their turn, which is, uh, it's the right play. There's the ball pickup. Works out. It's a two plus on the pickup with an AG of four. Even if it didn't work out, he uh, wasn't going to spend the reroll there. Turn one now. The Dinner Bell Darlings, their first time at bat, so to speak. There needs to be a better analogy than at bat. <laughs> and there, there they go. You can see the doors just marking everyone. <laughs> With all that guard, it is what they do best. It is indeed what they do best. And all that guard is exactly uh, how you'll see uh, most Dwarven teams kitted out with their first upgrade on their linemen. They like to stay grouped up, and when you like to stay grouped up, you like to pick up guard. Many, many marks. Five players marked now. He has uh, 1 minute 50 seconds left to go. He's taking the blitz. Two die blitz on the right side of the line. He's going to get a knockdown on who's on first. He's looking for a 9 plus. He doesn't get it, but he'll follow up. We'll see how many other players he dedicates to marking uh, some of these backfield players. Uh, it looks like he's gonna no. If he if he goes a if he goes ham here, that's gonna force that's kind of catchy's hand. But he didn't. Well done here by Doug the Minotaur. He still has a few players left downfield to defend with. That means uh, that's kind of catchy. Can't get can't get super risky. They can't get too wild with a with a pass. But we'll see if uh, he can get this ball down pitch and, and defend it here on turn two. Starts turn two with a pow against Butch Casserole on the blitz. He Polish says his only hope is to avoid contact. <laughs> <laughs> well, when everybody has agility for it, it definitely makes it a little easier to get out of contact. It does indeed. If you have a positive dodge with easy for it, it's a two plus to dodge. Who doesn't like a two plus? 
You know who doesn't like a two plus? Nuffle. Nuffle doesn't like a two plus. <laughs> I can confirm that. <laughs> Spoon plays down pitch. He's gonna try to try to eat up some pitch here on the right side. Either that or he's gonna threaten to pass. We'll see what he decides to do here. He has a minute seven seconds left in his turn. Taking a step back. We saw this tactic before. Doesn't want to score early. This is a good way to stall. The conventional stall tactic is to cage up and, and camp out on the opposing, uh, near the opposing goal line. Uh, you don't really want to do that when you're up against a super bashy team and you're not a bashy team in return because then they're just going to bash you. <laughs> Good dodge on the line. GFIs get three players down pitch on the opposing 10-yard line. 35 seconds left. GFIs again. And now Giggity Giggity is on the opposing 12-yard line over in the right wide zone. Dodge enough, you're bound to fail one. Fail the dodge there. He's debating spending the reroll. Besides, it's worth it here. Dodge works out. Didn't want that pressure coming down the right side of the pitch on the ball carrier. What's he going to do with number 10? You think two dodges? Ooh. I'd, I'd try dodging him forward. <laughs> <laughs> I might dodge him back, but, but I don't know. Oh, he's, you called it again, dodged him for him, got him down pitch. With that many players down pitch, Doug's really going to have to scramble to cover everyone. Yeah, he's going to have to start pulling players back, and that means less pressure on the running game here. Turn two now for the Denebel Darlings. Or he might just say, you know what? Fine, send them back there. I don't care. I'll beat everyone up. <laughs> who polish says i feel like five turns for dwarves is like two to three turns for almost everyone else i i think that's very accurate yeah dwarves are very very slow if they want to score they've got to move uh almost every turn kevin bacon in safety position he pulls back he's gonna stay stay where he is he's gonna he's gonna hold the backfield or downfield rather Man, I left him in trimmers. S'mores Dragon, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate it very, very much. Very kind. Thank you. Yes, indeed. The Dinner Bell Darlings are doing just that. They're saying, no, no, I'm just going to beat you up. You don't scare me. Moves back his line into pairs of two. And now here's the blitz. Gravy Crockett going in for a surf attempt. <laughs> Spends the reroll. He wants the push there. He got it. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> took the pal. Got an injury with Mighty Blow. Well done. Oppo gets spent. He's got two. Now he's got one. Oh, <laughs> wow, well done by the Dinner Bell Darling. First rule of fight club is to get smashed into the penalty box or the injury box. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure he'd take the push, but then you know what? It's better to take the pal. He's got mighty blow. One man player advantage for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Turn three for that's kind of catchy. They're going to try to blitz down Queso Bill. Look at the pal. Good knockdown. Plan I was going to say plenty of movement left for the lineman. No, it's not. He's got one space of movement left. So many Skaven teams in this competition. I'm just used to them all moving anywhere <laughs> they want. That 
Blitz was with a, a wrestle player, so if you got a both down result, that still would have worked out. That's kind of catchy. Taking the opportunity to, to reset their their pocket here. Darabelle Darling's decided to not not press not press down uh, down pitch here. And that's kind of catchy. He said, okay, fine. Then I'll move. If you won't move, I'll move. Hands off to the Witch Elf. Witch Elf is a blodger with sidestep. And she slides into this protective pocket here over on the left side of the pitch, all the way up to their own two-yard line now in the left wide zone. Good dodge, bounce down pitch. Boy, oh boy. Great positioning here. Boy, that's kind of catchy. We'll see if he can keep this ball alive. Um, but so far, so good. Two-die block with N being the journeyman against General So. It's going to get a knockdown. Debating whether to follow up there or not, decided not to. And that'll be the turn. Turn three back to the Dinner Bell Darlings. You can see they're, they're in danger of getting left behind here. Sweet Bunny did just a, a superlative job here, right? He had a bunch of players down pitch, moved the ball very, very quickly with that Witch Elf, who has an MA of seven, all the way up to the line of scrimmage, and then shifted all those downfield players over to the left. And now, now he's in great position to try to cut off this defense. Yeah, that was beautiful play. And now these dwarves, these dwarves are going to have to sprint. <laughs> they're just, they're going to have to run. <laughs> it's taking a mark on number seven. <laughs> Clive, thank you for the bits. Welcome to the stream. Can those dwarves get back there in time? Uh, it's going to depend. I mean, they can get back there, but it's still turn three, so we'll see when Sweet Bunny wants to score. Two die block gets the knockdown. Who's on first? GFI has to take a mark on the number nine journeyman. Here comes the blitz on that journeyman. Gets the knockdown. He'll follow up here. He'll take a mark on the ball carrier. Well done. Turn four for that's kind of catchy. Still in pretty good shape here, but uh, they're going to have to make a big decision. Uh, move forward or move backward. And I think the decision is probably going to be to move forward. If they move forward, they're probably looking at a turn five touchdown. Um, and we'll see if that's enough. Two die blitz on the Sunday kid. They're getting knocked down. These blitz are going to advance. Indeed he will. Moving forward is going to be the call. <laughs> Trying to set up a protective line here for the Witch Elf in the left wide zone. There she goes. She is now on the Dinnerbell Darlings 14 yard line, right on the sideline there. But remember, she doesn't care. She has sidestep. 
and they've got stubby little legs. <laughs> He's closed in the, the back of this pocket. We see if he can get this dodge. If you get in front, he does. Well done. That's good. Boot polish says that's kind of catchy. He's officially made it further downfield than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty seconds left for that's kind of catchy. Three players left to action. Good stand-up dodge by number eight, who's on first. Probably has two more dodges to take. Might take it with the journeyman first. Indeed he does. Well done. I was actually expecting him to go for the two-day block there. Uh, with the assist with who's on first, yeah. I think the protection, I don't know, I, I tend to be, a, well, I say I tend to be risk adver adverse, but I take lots of risks. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think I would have preferred the protection to the block, but I don't know. Final turn of the first quarter is going to start with a block on who's on first. It's going to get knocked down. It's going to take a, a number of marks here on this protective line. The line is shifted uh, vertically, um, but it is a line nonetheless. And uh, he'll take some blocks if another turn is afforded to him. So he's trying to apply some pressure here and force. That's kind of catchy to score here on this turn five coming up. <laughs> SP Beater says the turn for a low odds play was named after you. That was a real bloops play. <laughs> Don't you denigrate the bloops. That wasn't that wasn't low odds. That was all training. That was hard work all week. Load most dice to roll all the sixes. <laughs> <laughs> How it's dare you thing. suggest that a long bomb from one end zone to a couple of dodges to a handoff to the other end zone with a human team was low odds. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Two die blitz. We'll get the knockdown. Must follow up due to frenzy. Clefie says, I missed the pregame. How many journeymen does Sweet Buddy have? He has three. Good GFIs there to try to close the gap. I don't think it's going to be enough, but uh, good play by Doug the Minotaur. Can you do it again? He says no. <laughs> Turn five for that's kind of catchy. He's, man, what great positioning here. So he gets Kevin Bacon into position to try to uh, eliminate the the assist for the two die block on General Custer. Can really see why both of these teams made it to the final. What positioning and the momentum shifts have have really been back and forth here. Uh, the ball started in the hands of that's kind of catchy. Of course, they were they were playing the stalling game. Doug the Minotaur did not take the bait. He said, "You know what? I'm going to stay put. I'll beat up the guys you threw down pitch." Sweet Bunny countered that. He said, "All right, well then I'm moving forward. I'm going to shift all my players over the left, and now I control the left side of the pitch. Now what are you going to do?" Doug the Minotaur countered that with, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lock you down over here. I'm going to make you take some ch some tough choices with your Witch Elf. What are you going to do now? It has been a chess match back and forth. And you can see just how much of a chess match it has been. We're a minute 15 seconds into this turn. That's kind of catchy. Really, really thinking and considering what he wants to do here. Some really not so great options there too. 
indeed. I think, I think maybe a dodge with number six to blitz general cut. Oh, all right. Mighty blow blitz. That'll do it. One die mighty blow blitz. He needs to reroll this. He didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now what? Now what do you do? That's why I would have went with the I would have dodged with the wrestle player. Oh, he's gonna retreat! Oh, talk about momentum! He says, I can't get through that. I'm falling back. That's a, that's makes a bold It does! That's a bold general play there. Is he Is he a general? <laughs> Fail the dodge to number six here. Decides to re-roll this. He's down to one re-roll for the half. Yeah, without standing up number eight, that was not terribly safe. <laughs> wow. He's going to take this two die block against Queso Ooh. Bill. Oh, got the skull. <laughs> Food polish says kind of that's kind of catchy has officially gone back to about where I made it. <laughs> I think that was I think that was brilliant. I, I he's not safe, but you know, he said I can't get through that. I can't make it safe, so I'm going to retreat. Uh the dice didn't work out, <laughs> but uh but I thought that was a really good call. It can be very easy to get very close to the end zone and just say, you know what? You know what? I'm go I'm there. I'm just gonna go for it. And he decided it wasn't worth the uh, worth the investment. We we'll see if she can remain standing uh, on a potential blitz coming up. She is a blodger, so the power would be needed on a blitz to knock her down. I don't think there's any tackle within range. Except for maybe Paul Funyon with a GFI. And I guess that one, would be two, two GFIs. One, two, three, four. It'd be one GFI to make the one GFI to make the blitz. Taking these blocks first, as you gets a stun on Giggity Giggity. Two die block this time on Enbeam. Gets the knockdown. Like he says, this is actually a surprising lack of armor breaks on the elves. Yeah, Dark Elves, I mean, AV8, we talk about it all the time, but AV8 is a far cry from AV7. I'm not that surprised. Um, but uh, with all the uh, guard and mighty blow, I imagine we'll see we'll see more. Not that not that guard helps with the arm breaks per se, but it certainly helps you get those two die or sometimes even three die blocks. Here comes that blitz, two die blitz on the witch elf, but fail the GFI. Got the pal he was looking for. Where's the ball going to scatter? He went to the sideline hoping maybe the ball would scatter out of bounds, perhaps. But it did not. One more GFI movement to get a mark on the ball by Paul Funyon. Well done by the Dinnerbell Darlings. Failed the GFI on the blitz. Spent the reroll, got the pal. The pal is what he needed. Which elf would sidestep to the sideline, but the ball would stay in play. And now that's kind of catchy. Has some tough decisions to make. Eight of their players are currently prone and in a tough spot. Seven of their players. Two good dodges by the number eight lineman. Looks like it's going to be a stand up blitz against Paul Funyon, perhaps? Doesn't need the blitz with jump up. 
He doesn't need the blitz with jump up. Brilliant. Gets the pal. You pal me, I'll pal you. I feel that's a euphemism for something. <laughs> well done. Jump up means, uh, well, he took the blitz. He took the blitz anyway because he wanted to move with the ball carrier. I think that's fair. But jump up, more importantly, means that he saved that 3MA. And now he gets full movement. And the Witch Elf is going to recover the ball and continue retreating. GFI is to the 16 yard line. GFI is again. That's going to put her uh, in a safe spot here on their own 18 yard line. Man, oh man. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Now he'll get an opportunity to try to reset the rest of his team here. Good dodge downfield. Oh, that's what she said. Is that what she said? I don't think that's what she said. Sure it is. <laughs> Good dodge downfield. <laughs> She's always complimenting my dodges. <laughs> Another good dodge by the number 11 journeyman takes a mark from Kevin Bacon. Blitz has already been spent. Finally failed a dodge here. I ma yeah, I imagine he won't spend the reroll on this. That'll be a turnover. Like he says, so many dodges to take. Yes, indeed. And even though many are, all of those that we saw were two plus, I mean, you roll enough of those, you're going to fail one, right? It's not like you're rolling a D100, you're rolling a D6. So uh, the dinner about Dar Darling's forcing those dodges. I mean, it's always it's always a good decision to force your opponent to roll dice. Turn six for the Darlings. 30 seconds in, they're deciding what they're going to do here. They've got a two-die block with Kevin Bacon if they want to take it. They've got a lot of pitch to try and cover. They do. They take the blitz instead. Two-die blitz with Troll Slayer. They get an injury on the journeyman. Two-man player advantage now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Those are... That's a permanent advantage uh, as their injuries. Well done. Freeze up, freeze up Kevin Bacon to uh, cover the blitzer. Indeed it does. Under minutes to play in turn six. Then about dollars with two rerolls left for the half. Bacon move to the right to cover Bazinga, the number four blitzer on the right wide zone. I have maybe never in my life seen dwarves forced to move as fast and as far as they've had to in this game. <laughs> Dennerbell Darlings with an impeccable defense. You can see he's he's resetting here. He's just using all of his movement, shifting to the right, trying to Trying to play some coverage here. Oh, are you, you're not going to foul number six. How did, that would be rude. That'd be rude. Definitely going to take some marks here. Prevent those uh, players from standing up and moving away. Or at the very least, forcing them to roll some dice on the dodge. Ten seconds to go. Just General Custer, number six blitzer. Back to center pitch, three seconds left. Shifting another player over to center pitch. And he'll finish off the turn with quiet burp. Moving back a few spaces and to take the mark on the number nine lineman down over on the left wide zone. Turn seven, now for that's kind of catchy. They need to start thinking about their score.
both coaches have to be nervous about these next two turns. <laughs> Boo, Clappy's blue. Blue? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> he says he's got several options to try to score on turn eight. All of them are a bit dicey. <laughs> SP Beaver with the solutions. Nothing a few sixes can't solve. Ha! Moves the Witch Elf laterally to the right. She's now in the right wide zone. Still out of range. Very much out of range, but uh, we all know the play that he's setting up for. Stand up Blitz. Gets a knockdown on the big Regu. He would love it if he gets a 10 plus here. Didn't get it, fair enough. Follows up with the, the number three Blitzer. Still has a few points of movement left. And the Blitzer will lend an assist on Gravy Crockett. Blue Collar says if he keeps Duck from scoring, he'll already be a point ahead of me. Failed dodge is number four. That'll be the end of the drive. Oh, got stunned. He'll be out effectively for the rest of the half. Didn't want that. Let's see what he does in turn eight. But first, turn seven for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Morris Dragon asks, does the Witch Elf hand the ball off to a different player? She can't move that far in one turn, right? I think she can get here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one GFI. She can get over here if she wants, but I imagine she'll move forward and pass to someone. Uh, but we'll see. Actually, no. I think she probably will hand off to number eight uh, if, if Sweet Bunny can at all help it. Remember, that's kind of catchy. Has a wizard hidden somewhere in the stands. I'd imagine they'll want to save it for the next drive. Indeed. They definitely don't want... Well, I don't want to say definitely. But, um, they, they certainly want to try to score. Of course, you always want to try to score. Um, I'm not... I don't think it's too imperative if they don't score in this half, but then they would have to stop the offense in the next drive. And that, that could be difficult. Yeah! Dinner Bell Darling's trying to pick off every scoring threat they can. Here's the Blitz. Gets another pal. Boy, he rolls lots of pals. <laughs> <laughs> Blitz armor! It's gonna be a stun. That's two stuns. Two players that are out for the rest of the half. Now is it just the journeyman that can score? It is now. <laughs> I mean, I guess number two can technically score, but he's certainly not going to. <laughs> Like he's asked, was there any other inducement than the wizard? Yeah, SP Beaver's right. There's an extra apothecary. One was spent fairly early to no effect. He was he was the cheap apothecary. <laughs> Two dive lock on number seven gets another pal. He will not follow up here. Wants to keep that mark on number eight. So many pals. <laughs> so many pals. Is there a skill that just weights the dice? <laughs> is, that, is that what he has? Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised. He need to move number 15 maybe back a little further. Try to force the Witch Elf to, to eat up some movement points. Well, there's the scorer. That's Enbean in the end zone. How does the ball get to them is the question. It's going to have to be a handoff to number eight, and number eight's going to have to throw. Uh, 
Life says I would try to get the dwarf between the witch elf and the runner there. Yeah, that's that's what I uh, what I was uh, what I was mentioning. I thought I thought for sure he'd do that. Nobody is on their feet except number eight and number six. Number six has to catch the ball. Two GFI. Oh, it's going to be a long bomb. Six plus pass. All right. Failed the pass here. Oh, and it's very sunny, too. <laughs> no interception didn't work out. <laughs> Decided that oh, was boy. his best course of action. <laughs> oh, man. Went for the long bomb. I didn't even see the weather. <laughs> that caught me off guard. Failed the pass. It's gonna be zero zero at the end of the half. But not before not before this poor witch elf takes a blitz. Two die black coming up on number eight. Gets a push. So, somebody eject Clytheus from the chat. <laughs> Clytheus says there's so much guard in this game, there's no excuse for being caught off guard. <laughs> Dude, I block. Uh, he'll probably spend the reroll here. Yes, indeed. He's looking for the power. Didn't get it. <laughs> Spores, Spores Dragon rates, rates the punt a 3 out of 10. <laughs> Good pickup. He's going to try to pass for some SPP here. Failed the pass. <laughs> I would have. I would have leveled up Soy Rogers. Didn't work out. That's fine. That's the end of the half. Zero zero at the half. Holy moly! What a half it was. Dinner Bell Darlings are going to be on offense here in the second half. They're going to have a two-man player advantage. It'll be eleven v nine on the pitch. That's kind of catchy. Back up to three rerolls along with the Dinnerbell Darlings. What do you think that's kind of catchy does now? Do they just play, do they play like real solid defense and look for an opportunity to, to wizard if they need to, or are they going to get aggressive and try to get this ball back uh, through oh, a brute force? My guess is with the former. Yeah, uh, zero zero now is, is an interesting state to be in. The, the dwarves don't have a passing game. I mean, they, they can, of course, pass, um, but they won't. And so they need to run and they're not fast. <laughs> so uh, they need to they need to just play standard dwarven ball. But that means they need to be very careful with their cage because there's a fireball in play. And they need to keep moving. And if they keep if they need to keep moving, that might incentivize that's kind of catchy to try to take some uh, key marks to force Doug the Minotaur to make some suboptimal actions and maybe burn through some rerolls or worse, get a, a, an unfortunate turnover. Or he can play a defense where he just stays in front of that cage and just waits for the right time to to pop that that fireball or that lightning bolt and then snake the ball away and run away. That's his other option. Being zero zero, I I think it makes it more likely that the the wizards use to reclaim the ball, um, just because if he can score, especially if we get into the fourth quarter, he can win this game. No movement here on the defense. Five seconds left. We might have a paused game. Looks like we do. Life said, "Is there no one setting up?" Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like the game has been paused by uh, one of the coaches. There we go. The game's been reset back to a minute forty seconds. Those poor journeymen didn't know what they were signing up for. <laughs> Do they ever, though? <laughs> Clive says they knew exactly what they were signing up for. 
They read the agreement. Maybe they didn't read it, but they signed the agreement. <laughs> they are assumed to be savvy and to understand the contracts they get into. Unconventional defense here, too. I don't even know what to make of this defense. I didn't know what to make of the offense, but it worked out brilliantly. I have no idea what to make of this defense. What? What is this? You know what this looks like? This looks like Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of like the offset line when you're going into strength, because it kind of forces them to have to pick the opposite side. Fair enough. Offense line to the uh, offense o offset line is uh, his three linemen over on the left side of the pitch and then has this uh, strange diagonal formation of this little diagonal pyramid here. Three, two, one uh, in the backfield. He has six, six linebackers, I would argue. Yeah, what it does is it either kind of forces them to kind of squeeze gradually to the right or squeeze really tight to the left. Which will allow the defense to, to basically double up and allow them to, to strengthen their defense when there's less pitch to cover. Five-man offensive line for the Dinnerbell Darlings. They'll try to block down this line. Look at all that guard. I hate it. <laughs> it's scary going into that. <laughs> Kevin Bacon back to receive. Here's the kick. It's a high kick. Who's going to try to pick this ball up without, uh, without having to roll for it during the normal turn? It's going to be Kevin Bacon naturally. They have to pick Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon, come on! You gotta catch that ball. It's a championship game, buddy. He just flatlined. <laughs> two die block on the line. He'll push sideways on the journeyman, so he'll get another two die block. Uh, but first up, well, he'll take it. He's everybody in the line has guards, so it doesn't really matter what the action order is, is on the line. Gets another push on this number ten lineman, NB. He just doesn't want to go down. Finally gets a knockdown on the number nine lineman. <laughs> Swiss Dragon says he's got greasy hands. He's got bacony hands. <laughs> Ellie Marina says that was Guac Holiday. It was Guac Holiday! Oh, I'm so oh, sorry! It? I'm so sorry, Guac Holiday! I'm sorry, buddy! <laughs> You just, you look like a movie star. <laughs> it's a stunt double. <laughs> Line's been locked, uh, been locked down, <laughs> been blocked down here. One minute, 17 seconds left to go. You could say locked down too. Locked down, locked down, it all works. Is the attempt at the ball pickup worked out with Guac Holiday, not Kevin Bacon. Here's Kevin Bacon over here. I, I'd know that big spiky fist anywhere. Except when it's Guac Holiday, and then apparently I don't know it. Guac Holiday is going to move that ball up to his own 12-yard line. Kevin Bacon and Gravy Crockett to protect as is General So. Turn nine for that's kind of catchy. Baby says, man, Doug even has an extra dwarf. Yeah, he had a 12, 12 man roster going up against a, an eight man roster in this game.
momentum, the key factor in the first in the first half, and uh, it is going to be the deciding factor here in the second half for sure. Blitz to start thing out. Start things off after a couple of uh, players shuffled around. Gets a pow here on the yeah. Sunday kids. Absolutely will not follow up. Moves the blitzer back into position to play some defense here. We'll end this turn with a dodge with uh, who's on first. Blitz has already been spent. Um, I'm not sure where you move your players. Maybe he pulls in number six. I don't. I don't really know. Ah! He's gonna move. <laughs> number six takes a step forward. Takes a step back. Really, he just wanted to show his back to the opposing team. That's what he's doing. He's just showing off. That dodge on the line. Well done by numbers uh, number eight, who's on first. That might be the end of the turn. Sets up a column over to the left. Decides not to fill in the column on the right. He wants to keep that that witch elf safe. He's going to be in the. Uh, I, I guess we'll call that a safety in the safety position. Turn ten now for the dinner bell darlings. Is anything safe with this much guard around? Oh, not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say, Kevin Bacon is a level four dwarven runner. And I'm just saying, we have seen a level four dwarven runner fireballed to death in this league. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> mm. Two dive blitz and the number 10 journeyman gets a push. He'll get a frenzy follow up here. Another two dive blitz. Now he gets the knockdown. Hold on. Gets a KO on end beam. Three man player advantage now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. SBB says too soon. Clyfree says, yeah, it only happened like 14 years ago. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I can put it back in the intro. I mean, that's no trouble. I could do that. <laughs> <I could. laughs> SB Beaver says, you know what? We're good. We're good. <laughs> Setting up a pocket here on the right side of center pitch. That'll be where Guac Holiday moves into. Hell New Arena says, that was Erez, right? <laughs> Watching him die never got old. It was indeed error as. <laughs> that was uh, Malik's Chaos Team versus Merrick Storbin Team. Yeah, you can see this very, very, very wide cage here for the Dinobo Darlings. They are very aware of that wizard. Turn 10 for that's kind of catchy. So now because of the wide cage, they do have options. They they have options to, to apply a little pressure. They won't get wacky with it. Uh, they'll probably spend a few turns taking the blitz, seeing where that gets them. I think if this game goes to overtime, surely that favors the darlings, yeah? 
Well, it, at that point, it really depends on who gets the ball. Yeah, I think it depends it, on the coin toss. <laughs> yeah. It, it also depends on whether or not the wizards spent. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, if the Elven team wins the coin toss in overtime, uh, and they they have an appreciable number of players left, that that's very scary for the Dwarven team. Takes a blitz on Gravy Crockett. Doesn't get much out of it. He's deciding if he wants to dodge that blitzer away. That's the mighty blow blitzer. Good dodge. Boot Polish says maybe it's a bacon lightning bolt. Let me, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell everyone a secret, all right? I sometimes, well, sometimes I'll order a, a club sandwich, right? I did that for dinner today. I ordered a club sandwich, a turkey club. But what I do <laughs> is, <laughs> if, if I can't get it without the meat, I, I, I just, I mean, I, I like turkey just fine, but for a club sandwich, I kind of like it. It's just mayo, lettuce, and bacon. <laughs> so if, if I can't get it without the meat, I'll just pull the meat off. That's what I did today. And let me tell you, it was delicious. <laughs> My old bacon and lettuce sandwich. Mmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cheaper to uh, order a BLT and then take off the tomato? You be quiet, sir! <laughs> <laughs> I guess you miss a piece of bread that way as well. Nobody needs your logic and reasoning. <laughs> Why don't you just order a turkey club and take off the turkey, huh? Why don't you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> Clypheus makes an excellent point. Removing tomato isn't even possible. It is not possible. You'll remove that tomato, but some of it will stay. <laughs> Two night blitz here on turn 11 gets the push on number seven. Follow up, frenzy follow up. This is the knockdown. This is the trouble with this troll slayer. Boy, he got through mighty blow again. Well done. The trouble or the benefit? <laughs> the the trouble for that's kind of catchy. <laughs> the benefit oh, gotcha. for Dinabelle Darlings. <laughs> <laughs> you're all you're chucking that many dice with uh, uh, mighty blow. That's just really really scary for the opposing team. Just ask Bidoof. <laughs> Poor Bidoof. <laughs> Two die block on the right side of the pitch here gets a knockdown. You did a great job of keeping that wide cage. It's doing a fantastic. Both these coaches with their positioning has been just on point. I mean, I know, I know we're in a championship match of a competition, and so that's to be expected to some degree. But I'm always so impressed when I see these top teams uh, uh, play their games uh, like this. It's just, oh man. I mean, this is why I play games. <laughs> it's so great to see. All right, tightens up the cage a little bit here. Moves Squawk Holiday to so the two yard line, shifts him over a little bit. Turn 11 now, so that's kind of catchy. They still have their defense intact, despite the best efforts of uh, Gravy Crockett. This, this very sunny icon needs to be a little different, I think. Yeah, I can never tell it apart from uh, the regular. Perfect weather, yeah. <laughs> Two that block on Wyatt Perp gets the knockdown, follows up. Here's the blitz. Two dive blitz on Soy Rogers is going to be a push. 
follows up there as well. That's the blitz spent. <laughs> Elder Bruna says, perhaps the smiling baby son from the Teletubbies would be better. You know what? <laughs> or <That> terrifying. Would... <laughs> <laughs> it would be terrifying, but it would be different. <laughs> Decided to follow up there and second guess his move. Had to do a dodge to get to safety. Worked out. Bootpaw says, I appreciate how he had the junior runner ball. Uh, the junior runner carry the ball so Bacon wouldn't get wizarded. Uh, <laughs> if if that was the play, I mean, yeah, that's great. Smart play, definitely. Ooh, fails. A little surprised that he went for the reroll there. Yeah, I, I was too. I, I thought he would have let that go, but uh, he really wants to keep the defense intact. You can see he is trying to apply a little bit of pressure here. He's trying to make a move, make something happen. Gets the assist on the left side. Got the two die block. It's going to be a both standing result. He was looking for a little more action there. But uh, this way he keeps his defense on his feet. Uh, you can see he is bearing down. So he, he's applying that pressure. He's going to try to chip away at this cage. We'll see if he can make it work. I wager we're going to see a block or a blitz on number nine. And then the ball will shoot up in this direction. Maybe, maybe here or here. El Nuberino asks, if they go into overtime, they don't get new rerolls, right? That is correct. Bikes is correct. Yeah. So he took the block on number nine. He's opened up the hole here to move. Uh, to move diagonally in this direction. Although not that far because he's a dwarf. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't get new rerolls. So when overtime starts, it's basically like you're starting a new game. Uh, you don't get any new players back or anything other than... Well, I, I should rephrase. It's like you're starting a new half, except there's a coin toss in the beginning. So you do a coin toss. Whoever wins gets to choose to kick or receive. Um, but you don't get back to your rerolls. Uh, so after... Or once the second half begins, other than kickoff events, that's all the rerolls you have for the rest of the game. Uh, so, you, you know, when you're in a playoff match like this, uh, reroll management becomes a big, big deal because if it looks like it's going to go to overtime, you want to have that reroll advantage. Not just to have the rerolls in OT, but if it goes to kicks, those rerolls will help you on the kicks as well. Takes a blitz with the Troll Slayer. Gets a knockdown with it on the answer to life 42. He's trying to figure out exactly how he wants to set this cage up once he crosses the line of scrimmage. 20 seconds to go. Block Holiday is going to move over. Shuffle on over to the 8-yard line. Might move one more player over here. Well, he'll definitely move at least one more player over to the left and probably take some marks with the remaining players. He's doing a great job of keeping everything safe. He is. Great positioning. Took a mark with number 15, Soy Rogers. Doesn't take a mark with General So. He's pulling everyone back. Took a mark with... Uh, Kevin Bacon. Turn 12 now for That's Kind of Catchy. They've got two players out of position. This player and this player. And a little bit of a pickle. Uh, not too much for this player here. Uh, they can... Uh, they can do a 3 plus to a 2 plus dodge. Moves the Witch Elf down pitch. She's in the safety position. Two die block on White Burp's going to be a push. Doesn't follow up to get a, a second two die on White Burp. He's going to want to move giggity giggity, it looks like. <laughs> SP Beaver says that player's just two dodges away from an uphill block. What's the problem? <laughs> 
Stands up number nine. GFI is to move number eight, who's on first, to mark Gravy Crockett. Here's the blitz on Gravy. The old Gravy Blitz. Taylor yeah, Block gets a, <laughs> gets a pal. Troll Slayers only have an AV of eight. Breaks armor. Oh! R.I.P. Oppo spent. And still no! dead. Gravy Crockett, R.I.P. As my grandfather would have said, good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> good, gra dead gravy. <laughs> the troll slayer, the menacing troll slayer has been killed by that's what she said. <laughs> El Burrito says he's gravy trained dog food now. Is gravy train still around? <laughs> Fails the GFI, spends a reroll, or fails the dodge, spends a reroll, got snake eyes on the dodge. That's going to be a turnover. <laughs> SP Beaver, thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you very, very much. Very kind. I appreciate it. He was reduced to kibbles and bits. <laughs> Hush you. <laughs> you, you guys <laughs> and your puns. <laughs> They threw what was left of him in the chuck wagon. Yeah. <laughs> I remember chuck wagon too. Signor's loop says it bits and bits and bits. <laughs> I remember that commercial. <laughs> Dinner bell darlings are out for vengeance. <laughs> Oh, oh, a lovely serenade. Thank you for the bits, Clavius. <laughs> <laughs> Two die black on number seven. Got to get the knockdown here. Well, I didn't even realize we're in the fourth of final quarter now. <laughs> One minute into the fourth quarter. So much action. Oh. Blitz has still not been spent. It's got a mark on the downfield witch elf. Still in great shape, too, despite Ex Gravy Crockett's loss. That's true. It's got an even tighter cage now. Here comes the Blitz on the Witch Elf. He's looking for a pal. It's going to reroll that. Got a push out of it. Doesn't have Gravy Crockett to get the frenzy follow up here. She's going to sidestep forward. She says, excuse me, sir. Good use of the remaining movement point of Butch Casserole to, to shut off the column here. One die block across the line of scrimmage. They get the knockdown of Joe Garner. Gets an injury on Bazinga. And all of these injuries, this Dark Elf team is running out of players. I think we'll see a wizard at the start of this turn. Oh, we, we might. I mean, any at any point now, this wizard's going to come into play. Here it is, the lightning bolt. Gets a KO Ooh. on Guac Holiday. Oh, now that's a favorable scatter if I've ever seen one. Holy moly. Used the lightning bolt on the ball carrier, got the KO. The ball scattered right to the edge of this cage. This is 
the opportunity that that kind of catch he's going to have to try to get this ball back. Take a mark on number 15. Would you knock if... someone onto the ball here? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if he can get this ball back, it is almost certainly going to go into the hands of number six. And number six is just going to run like the wind. He's deciding what angle to come at this blitz. Takes the mark on number nine. Needs two dice for the blitz. He'll still need somebody to come in and get the ball. Wow, took the blitz. Took the blitz with number six instead. Who's going to get this ball? Breaks armor! That is a great stun. This turn is shaping up to be a pivotal one for that's kind of catchy. like number seven might be going for the ball who's going for the ball the witch elf is going for the ball yeah i don't know i don't know i I'd, I'd say number seven that's my guess yeah it might be number seven minus one on the pickup then i'll have a positive dodge to safety has one reroll left for the entire game though I'm so surprised that number uh, number six pulled back. Looks like he's going to try to set up some semblance of uh, of a cage. Yeah, he's got three players on it. Here's the ball pickup. Good pickup. Two plus dodge. Good dodge. Well done. So he's got a three point cage now. Hand off to the witch elf. Well done. Well done. Now the ball is is well safe in the hands of the witch elf. Two good dodges by the number nine journeyman. Turn 14 for the dinner ball darlings. They're now on the back foot. What a play. Excellent play by Sweet Bunny there. Doug the Minotaur still perhaps thankfully has a bunch of players uh, down pitch here. He's got five players at the line of scrimmage. He'll probably want to take a uh, reposition them. He might take the blitz with Kevin Bacon just to reposition Kevin Bacon um, and try to stop the score. But now it is going to be tough. What an excellent turn. Yeah, some By of these doors are definitely going to get left behind. Absolutely. Tenebrell Darling's doing what they can do. They'll take some blocks, they'll take some marks, they'll force. That's kind of catchy to roll some dice, but they also have to play defense as well. Two die block with Soy Rogers. This will work out due to the block skill. Oh, oh but <laughs> Russell takes him down. Russell will take him down. I stand corrected. <laughs> that is a man. Man, I always use wrestle on low AV players, but I am I am uh, I am learning something here by uh, from Sweet Bunny here. This this wrestle is great, especially against a Storvin team. I mean, that is a terrible trade for Doug the Minotaur. That Soy Rogers. He just basically lost a turn, right? He's on the ground. He gets one point of movement next turn. Takes a mark on Giggity Giggity. Buck's got to be careful not to take too many marks. Otherwise, he'll have everybody yeah. tied up. I am really surprised he's taking all of these marks. Still has the blitz. I imagine he'll blitz with Kevin Bacon and then pull Kevin Bacon back. No, that's the turn. Wow, turn 14 now for that's kind of catchy. 
<laughs> Speed Beaver says, don't forget his two GFIs. He can move up to three next turn. Wow. All of those marks. He's banking on a failed dodge, I suppose. That's kind of catchy. Three turns to score and to be named the new Chaos Cup champions. Doug the Minotaur trying to get this ball back and score so they can become the new champions. <laughs> Clavius says, we don't need a new KS Cup champion. He is, of course, the current reigning KS Cup champion. Which Elf skedaddles down pitch, moves all the way up to their own four-yard line. Right on the right sideline. Forty-five seconds left to play in turn fourteen. One re-roll left, but that's kind of catchy. Stand up blitz. They get the knockdown on Butch Casserole. Breaks armor. Gets a stun. Butch Casserole is effectively going to be out for the rest of the game at this point. If I to get that protective unit on the ball carrier. It's going to be all but impossible to stop them now. Yeah, I, boy, going all in on those marks, man. Oh. Yeah, that's a good GFI by the number three blitzer. That's going to force General Custer to, to not get at that ball carrier. Right, he's going to have to continue moving backwards. Another good dodge by number eight. He's got momentum now. The tables have turned. Failed dodge by number nine. Yeah, he'll leave that. He'll leave that alone. Caltain. He's, uh, he's the journeyman. He's going to be stunned. And now he'll be out for effectively the rest of the game. Oh man, someone hit that GFI button. <laughs> I was feeling you're gonna see a lot of them. Oh boy. What a back and forth game this has been. 0-0 zero, zero is the score here. Turn 15. <laughs> Thanks, Clypheus. <laughs> <laughs> Clypheus with the emergency GFI warning. Here's the blitz! The old Kevin Bacon blitz! <laughs> He'll get the knockdown. Fails the GFI! <laughs> that you had the warning! <laughs> Called it! <laughs> <laughs> you had two warnings! <laughs> but like what's what's the plan here? Like I think he, he was going to try and screen him off. So Kevin Bacon has a movement of six. So that's that's here, maybe, maybe to the 18 yard line. You have the witch elf. We can get to the 16 yard line. Okay, o okay, I, I can see it, but I have to imagine Kevin Bacon's gonna get, gonna get picked off here. He's this uh, number two blitzer will get in front of him. Hard to pick him off when he's strength four though. Well, I mean, I mean the strength four blitzer will just, will just exert tackle zones in front of him. Failed GFI again. You know what? You have only yourself to blame, Doug the Minotaur. Clive <laughs> <laughs> is an SB Beaver. Thank you for the bits. You warned them. You warned them, and you're right. SB Beaver says they never learn. <laughs> One reroll apiece. Turn 15 for that's kind of catchy. They've got to end in scoring position. There is number two getting in front of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. 
which Alf moves down to the 12 yard line. Is she going to GFI? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is number three going to dodge? That's my question. <laughs> I think number three has to dodge. Failed dodge here could be the end. It, it could be in the end of the drive for sure. <laughs> for sure. Sweet Bunny has 50 seconds left to the side. Here comes that dodge attempt. Oh, failed the dodge. He's got to spend the reroll. Is he going to rely on his blodge skills? He says no. He thought better of it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Snake eyes. Failed the dodge. And now, and now the ball carrier is in trouble. What is happening right now? Free it up, Kevin. SB Beaver says never dodge. Thank you for the bits. He probably says ring that ring that dinner bell. All right, he it's gonna be the two die blitz with Kevin Bacon. Here it comes. He's he got needs time. a pal. Doesn't get the pal here. He has to spend it. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's a both standing result. All right, he needs to get General So into position. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is coming down to the wire. He's taking blocks first. I'm so scared. He doesn't have a reroll. I'm so scared. He can get General So in front of that witch elf. Russell kept the drive alive. Why is he not moving General So? What do I not understand? It's a GFI, so he wants to save it for last, I guess. Yeah, like I says, probably take one GFI to get in front of the Witch Elf. Trying to get some injuries, just in yeah. case. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Here it is, one GFI. Got it. Got the GFI. <laughs> oh, Paul Funyun, SB Beaver with the perfectly timed GFI warning. Paul Funyun did not listen. Turn 16 now for that's kind of catchy. Can they pull this out? Blitz with that's what she said on to General Tso. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> All you need is the put. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Get <a> it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need to make t-shirts of that. <laughs> if he pulls it off, there needs to be t-shirts made of that. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All he needs is the push on that blitz. That's all he needs. He doesn't have a reroll, though. Here's the blitz. One die blitz. Boy, he got that knockdown. And he's going to break armor. It's a two no. plus to win no. this game. There it is. One to zero. That's kind of catchy. Are the new Chaos Cup champions. I am entertained. Oh my goodness. What a game that was. <laughs> Unbelievable. One, uh, <laughs> one to zero of the final. Guac Holiday MVP for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Sure, why not? But the journeyman, the MVP for that's kind of catchy, boo. <laughs> <laughs> El Numerito says, wow, well, such great playing on both sides. Boot Polish says, I dislike elves. And Sagor Sloop says, 
That was so awesome. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played indeed, and well played by both coaches. That's kind of catchy. Dominated ball possession. They had it for the entire first half of the game. They got it back on defense in the second half, pulled it out to win on turn 16. SPP for this game. That's kind of catchy. He's walking away with, well, they're walking away with 10. They might pick up the journeyman because of the MVP. I imagine they will if they have the money for it. Dinnerbell Darlings are going to walk away with 11. Oh, <laughs> what a game. That was beautiful. Oh, I need to catch my breath. <laughs> and as you can see, that's kind of catchy. Wins this first tournament of the season. They are the new Chaos Cup champions. The third Chaos Cup champions of the league. Congratulations to Sweet Bunny. Uh, that's kind of catchy. Will advance to the upper bracket in the Blood Bowl later in the season but the Dinderbell Darlings are certainly not out of it. They will advance to the lower bracket in the Blood Bowl. And of course, we could see both of these teams return uh, in the Spike Magazine trophy. If not, we could see them return in the in the Dungeon Bowl. We have plenty of more Blood Bowl left to play in the season. Uh, I'm looking forward to each and every one of the games. How about you? Absolutely. How long do we have until the next one start up? Uh, I don't know. I figure we'll take uh, a week or two off. Uh, maybe it'll just be a week. Uh, I hadn't really decided yet, but it'll be at least a week off. Uh, after that, we're going to accept uh, entries for the, the next competition in the season. That'll be the Spike Magazine Trophy. And uh, if you'd like to play with us, you can certainly play with us. You can you can join in the middle of the season. You can you can come compete in the Spike Magazine Trophy. The rules are set up in such a way that uh, uh, even if you join up in the middle of the season, you still have a, a very good chance of making it to the Blood Bowl. It's uh, uh, the rules are deliberately set up to uh, allow players to uh, have a competitive shot at the Blood Bowl without uh, having to worry about, you know, life getting in the way or having to dedicate like, you know, week after week after week after week to, to game playing or like in a ladder in a ladder type setup where you know, if you can get in 14 games, you're in a better position than somebody who can only get in four. So uh, you can absolutely come play. Uh, we're very friendly to both new and uh, veteran coaches alike. If you've ever wanted to pick up the game of Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl 2 is very cheap now. You can pick up Blood Bowl 2. You can come play with us, with us in the Spike Magazine Trophy. You can sign up uh, on our website at uh, mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L.C-L-U-B. There's a little link at the bottom that says, uh, I don't remember what it says, but it says something like, hey, I want to play Blood Bowl. <laughs> well, you can find it. You know what? I'm going to find out what the link's called for you. I believe the length is called uh, Get Stomped by Dwarves. <laughs> it's called Play With Us. At the bottom of our, uh, our website, there's a little link that says Play With Us. You can follow the instructions there, or you can just join us on our Discord. Uh, and just say, hey, I'd like to play. What do I need to do? Uh, SPB, yeah, thank you for the link. There's the link right there. Again, it's mammal.club, M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B. Uh, come play with us. I love this game. And tonight is the reason why. Uh, Sweet Buddy says, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Uh, I bet. <laughs> what a great game this was. Absolutely. Oh, so good. Yeah, it was so good. And, and it really exemplifies, not to... to talk this up too much uh yeah i know i gush over blood bowl a lot but uh you know blood bowl is one of those games where players have so much agency that you get to see all sorts of things um and not only was this an exciting game like like you can have an exciting game of say uh king of tokyo right where you're just chucking dice and it's an exciting finish but in something like this not only was it exciting but it was exciting because both coaches were were stellar right because they played so well and every turn you know, we saw like we knew what to expect going in, but we didn't know how it was going to happen. We talked about how the momentum was going to shift, how the momentum was going to matter. And turn after turn, we we're like, oh, man, what a smart player. Oh, man, that was so cool. Or, oh, I can't believe that worked out. Or, wow, that's a great action order. This is what I love about about gaming. This is what I love about Blood Bowl. And uh, I just love to share this game, man. <laughs> it yeah. was so fun. I feel like I learned so much watching coaches like these play. Yes, indeed. S'mores Dragon, exactly right. Every move mattered. 
Oh, so, so fun, so exciting. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna take about a week off. After that, we'll open up uh, registration for, uh, for the Spike Magazine trophy. That's open to everybody who wants to play. Um, that will last for about a week. After that, we'll close registration. We'll get the uh, next competition underway. And then uh, the games will get scheduled for the next comp. When those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check it out and get alerted to the schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B. Here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk. Hey, we're going to record an episode this weekend, yeah? I hope so. All right, let's do it. Uh, and you can watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl. What more evidence do you need for how rad a game this is than tonight's game? You can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Artificial Bunny, thanks for, thanks for joining me on this super hype game tonight. Thanks for having me. And I cannot wait for the next competition. Nor can I. And until the Spike Magazine trophy, everybody, Take care and enjoy your Thursday evening.